what is up guys welcome back to yet another episode <laughs> all right so this is the other plane that we got we're gonna be doing a cold start on this as well we're gonna be learning them seeing how we do um i've already taken them for a spin or taking this one on a spin on enigma's cold war server and it is a fun plane uh got a couple kills already uh super fun not gonna lie let's see what do we got here anyways this is the f5 the taiga so may not be a showstopper for some of you but i love every plane and to me this is nostalgic to top gun you know <laughs> anyways uh let's get this going Morning, pilot. Today we will learn the procedures to cold start, taxi, and take off in the F5E. Press space when you are ready to begin. We are ready. Attention. If you have a gaming device that controls the aircraft's throttle, set it to idle position. The ignition system can operate from both an external ground power supply and the onboard battery. Set the battery switch to the upper bat position by using the mouse button or by pressing the right control plus right shift plus B keys. Alternate current is provided by two generators attached to the left and right engines. Each generator is enabled when engine RPM reaches 48% and stops generating when RPM is reduced to less than 43%. On the right vertical panel are two three-position switches marked L-Gen and R-Gen with a reset position. Below, on the emergency signal panel, are two warning lights, L-Generator and R-Generator. These light up when the corresponding generator is disconnected from the power network. Set the generator switches to the upper L-Gen and R-Gen positions by using the right mouse button or by pressing the right control plus right shift plus H and right control plus right shift plus J keys. The fuel system of each engine has its own boosted pump, which automatically provides fuel to the fuel system, including the afterburner pumps. Set the booster pump switches to the upper left and right settings using the mouse or by pressing the right control plus. An engine can only be started with compressed air provided by an external ground start unit. Compressed air spins up the engine compressor, which in turn provides air supply to the combustion chamber, creating a fuel-air mixture. Connect to the compressed air supply unit backslash radio menu f8 ground crew f5 ground air supply f1 connect once the ground crew reports Chief, that the ground, ground compressed air, air unit has been connected press space Copy. ground air supply is now connected always start the left engine first and then the right one the right engine can be started with the help of compressed air from the ground unit or from the left engine compressor. Give the command to the ground crew to spin up the engine rotor. Backslash radio menu, F8, ground crew, F5, ground air supply, F3, apply. Chief, apply ground air supply. Copy. Air is now applied. Once RPM reaches 10%, press the start button for the left engine located on the left vertical panel by use of the mouse or by pressing the left control plus left shift plus C keys. Then set the left engine throttle to the idle position by pressing the right alt plus home keys. The voiceover is a little robotic. When the is set to the idle position, fuel is supplied to the engine and will reach idle RPM within 35 seconds. As a result, 
idle RPM is 49 to 52%. Fair enough. Exhaust gas temperature is no less than 140 degrees Celsius. Temperature can for a short time reach higher levels, but should never exceed 845 degrees Celsius. Nozzle position is 60 to 79% from full open. Fuel consumption is around 400 pounds per second. Oil pressure is 5 to 20 PSI. After the left engine has been started, you must check. Pressure in the utility hydraulic system is 2,800 to 3,200 PSI. Happy. Auxiliary intake doors position indicator displays zebra. Intake doors of the left engine are opened, the right ones are closed. Using external F2 view, you can see the position of the intake doors using the external camera. To continue, return to the cockpit F1 and press space. Alrighty, so that's open. That's closed. That's the only thing I see open and closed, but I'm sure that once this we start to write, this will open. Alright. The right engine start procedure with help of the external compressed air is similar to the start of the left engine. The ground crew will automatically switch compressed air from the left engine to the right engine once the left engine reaches idle. Give the command to the ground crew to spin up the right engine compressor. Backslash radio menu, F8 ground crew, F5 ground air supply, F3 apply. Chief, apply ground air supply. Copy. Air is now applied. Once the right engine RPM reaches 10%, press the right engine start button located on the left vertical panel using the mouse or pressing the left control plus left shift plus V keys. Then, the right engine is now reaching idle RPM. Monitor engine related gauges. Idle RPM is 49 to 52%. Exhaust gas temperature is no less than 140 degrees Celsius. There it is. Nozzle position is 60 to 79 full open. Fuel consumption is around 400 pounds per hour. Oil pressure is 5 to 20 PSI. Pressure in the booster hydraulic system is 2,800 to 3,200 PSI. Auxiliary intake doors position indicator displays the word open. After a check of the engine gauges, press space. Looks like we're all good. Once both engines are started, you must ask the ground crew to disconnect the air compressor unit. Backslash radio menu. Chief, F8 disconnect ground, ground air supply. F5 ground air supply. F2 Copy. disconnect. Ground air supply is now disconnected. Reports that the ground compressed air units have been disconnected. Press space. You must now check the operability of the weapon control system radar. On the left control is the radar panel. Set the mode switch to standby. On the radar display on the instrument panel, wait 30 seconds for the horizon line to be displayed. The radar will then switch to warm-up mode. Warning, due to the possible overheating, the radar can operate on the ground for no more than 10 minutes. If necessary, to stay on the ground longer, set the radar mode switch to the off position and return to the standby shortly before takeoff. To set the mode switch back to the off position, use the left mouse button or press the 9 key. On the lower side of the fuselage, in 
front of the main landing gear compartment are two hydraulically operated air brakes that can be deflected down to 45 degrees. The air brakes are controlled by the three position thumb switch on the right engine throttle. Set the air brake switch to the retracted position by right mouse clicking the switch or by pressing the left control plus B keys. The FIE has an automatic wind control system. The wing control system includes the deflection of the leading edge slats and trailing edge flaps, which are used for safe takeoff, maneuvering, long distance flights, and safe landing. This is controlled by the flaps lever, located behind the throttles and the thumb switch on the right engine throttle. The control lever can be set to the following positions. Emer up, full retraction, independent of thumb switch position. Thumb SW, mechanization is controlled by the thumb switch. Full, full extension, independent of thumb switch position. The thumb switch has the following modes. Up, full mechanization retraction, used for maximum distance flight with all types of payload. Fixed, fixed mechanization position, provides minimum fuel consumption and improves lifting capabilities of the wing at lower speeds and used for maximum distance flight with external stores. Auto, automatic mechanization control, depending on angle of attack and or control signal from onboard computer. Leave the control mechanization lever behind the throttles in the thumb SW position. Set the thumb switch on the right engine throttle to the auto position by pressing it twice with the left mouse button or by pressing the F key. On the wing control mechanization indicator in the left portion of the instrument panel, the full mode is displayed. This is because the wing controls are in the auto mode and the aircraft is stationary. After takeoff and landing gear retraction, the control mode will change itself to auto. The stability augmentation system makes the aircraft easier to fly by controlling the stabilizer and rudder. It automatically dampens pitch and yaw oscillations and it provides manual rudder trimming. The SAS control panel includes switches for the pitch and yaw channel and a knob for rudder trimming. The pitch damper disable lever A is located on the stick. The onboard computer and controlling dampener channels provide comfortable flight at all speeds. Enable the pitch and yaw dampeners by setting corresponding switches to the yaw left all plus left control plus E and pitch left all. It is now time to set the pitch trimmer for takeoff depending on aircraft configuration presence of pylons, stores, missiles on launchers, and gun ammunition. If the trimmer is now set to takeoff position, a strong negative pitching movement will occur at takeoff. This can result in a crash, especially if the aircraft has a significant takeoff weight. Optimal positions of the pitch trimmer pointer for various takeoff configurations. No ammunition for guns, no stores, six. Drop tanks, ammunition, missiles, seven. Drop tanks, ammunition, missiles, bombs, rockets, eight. Ammunition, missiles, bombs, rockets, containers, nine. Because check to make sure that the airfield pressure is set correctly on the altimeter. Set zero altitude on the altimeter using the pressure knob by pressing the left alt plus left shift plus A and left alt plus left shift plus S keys or use the mouse wheel. All that is left now is to set up the artificial horizons. Enable the...
set a pitch value of minus three degrees on the backup artificial horizon by rotating. Set the same pitch value on the primary artificial horizon by rotating the horizon knob using the mouse wheel or by pressing the left alt plus left shift plus E. And everything is now ready for taxi. Wow. To start rolling, increase RPM to 85% using the num plus and num minus keys. Good day, Patrick. Start to roll and follow me. To engage the nose wheel oh. steering mechanism, <laughs> press and hold the S key. The nose wheel will now follow your rudder pedal inputs, Z and X. Maintain taxi speed by adjusting engine RPM and using the main wheel brakes W. Typical RPM value for taxiing is about 60%. That Humvee must be like, oh shit, he's coming. So, nose wheel steering used it to obviously get behind the Humvee, but at this point, I'm using brakes, differential brakes, to keep centered. Look at that. Right on his booty. <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm out of my way. A nice plane. We are Very now nice plane. Short, right in front of the runway threshold. At this location, you must stop and make sure that no aircraft are landing or taking off. And you must receive permission to take the runway. We can take the runway. Beautiful. So now for this corner, we're gonna activate or turn on nose wheel steering. Start turning using our rudders. Full stride to line up along the runway axis and stop. There it is. After taking the runway, roll forward several yards to align the nose wheel with takeoff direction. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Six, breaking with you. Good luck. Out. Several yards, he said. The nose strut of the M5E has two settings. By controlling the nose strut switch located above the left console, you can change the height of the strut, thus changing longitudinal pitch of the aircraft by three degrees. This reduces takeoff roll. During retraction, this strut shortens automatically. Set the nose strut switch to the extent position by clicking on it or by pressing the left alt plus left control plus Q keys. I already binded this, but you can, like you said, click it or bind it to one of your control switches. And there it is. It is now less than 10 minutes prior to takeoff, so we must start warming up the radar. 
Set the mode switch on the radar control panel located on the left console to the standby position using a right mouse button click or by pressing the zero key. On the horizontal situation indicator located in the center of the instrument panel, use the course knob to set the course pointer to 88 degrees. Do this with either the mouse wheel or by pressing the left alt plus left shift plus four and left alt plus left shift plus three keys. The set course is displayed in the course window. Check for the absence of pitch value on the main and backup artificial horizons. Activate pilot heating by setting anti-ice system switch to the piton right control plus right shift plus F position. The anti-ice engine switch located adjacent must be enabled when flying in cloud and in cold weather. Close the canopy by using the canopy lever on the right side of the cockpit or by pressing the left control plus C keys. Check that the canopy signal lamp on the emergency signal panel located on the right console went off. In front of you, on the instrumental panel, keep the main wheel brakes pressed, W. Increase engine RPM to 95%, not plus. Release the brakes and start rolling. Keep the aircraft straight down the runway with help of the rudder pedals as Z and X. Make sure that the aircraft accelerates in a straight line and then move the throttles all the way forward, non plus, into after. At a speed of 140 knots, slowly pull the stick towards you to lift the nose wheel and take off. Rotating. Come on. There we go. When airborne, retract the landing gear. G. Check that the three green lights over the gear indications are off, indicating that the landing gear has been retracted. Yep. Adjust the pitch trimmer to remove pitch forces from the stick, right control plus semicolon and right control plus period. There's the flaps auto right there. Nice. When the aircraft is fully fueled, the right engine tank contains 580 pounds more fuel than the left one. This nice. causes imbalance and the aircraft flight dynamics change during the flight. When all the fuel from the drop tanks has been used and the fuel is being fed from the right engine fuel system, you must enable auto balancing. Your aircraft is not equipped with fuel drop tanks. Set the auto balance switch into the position that corresponds to the fuel tank with the least amount of fuel using the left mouse button or by pressing the right control plus right shift plus left bracket keys. So the least is left. When the fuel difference between the left and right engine tanks is within 50 to 125 pounds, the auto balance switch will set itself automatically to the center position. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Interesting that the pedals are so shiny. You see that? Escape to finish the lesson. Not finishing the lesson? What's wrong with you? into the mountains as well like we did with the F-16 let's go down to the deck very close to it all 
Chevy. You can adjust the trim. I already have it binded. Ooh. Probably not the best idea to adjust trim while you're going so sl so low. This game is amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Such a tiny, tiny plane. So nimble. You can see it. Turn over here. You gotta be gentle with it though. I've already snapped the wings on it, so oof. And that this happens when you go negative what is it negative G's? Yeah, you feel you hear the, the ear popping thing. clouds auto balance went back to normal perfect that's cool in the clouds right there trying to bring the trim down back to zero where we had it oh, oh. Aircraft. see what happens and try again. <laughs> you could do it well then as I mentioned, don't jerk the stick too hard because you will snap your wings. Anyways. <laughs> ah, hit that like, hit that sub, and I'll catch you in the air next time. Peace. <laughs>